The incident during the initial reservoir filling of the dam, characterized by the emergence of a spring downstream of the Rockville Dam, unfolded as a complex and nuanced technical challenge, necessitating an exhaustive examination. At the specific coordinates elevation 1,005.75 meters above mean sea level, as the reservoir elevation gracefully advanced to elevation 1,011 meters above mean sea level, a hydrological anomaly presented a series of intricate features and interactions that demanded meticulous analysis. This spring, discovered on the morning of August 14, 2018, not only exhibited a correlation with the reservoir's elevation but also showcased distinct characteristics that set it apart. The visually estimated seepage, ranging between 300 to 400 liters per minute, was particularly noteworthy for the pristine clarity of the water, devoid of sediment. This visual cue hinted at a potential subterranean pathway through fractured rock, challenging conventional assumptions about porous soil dynamics. Situated downstream of the right abutment outcrop, the precise location of the spring prompted a deep dive into the dynamic interplay between the reservoir water and the geological features of the right abutment. The geological mapping from 2010 came into sharp focus, revealing the presence of less permeable graphite schist in this region. This geological formation acted as a natural barrier, restricting the seepage and adding layers of complexity to the incident's genesis. The initial assessment, while shedding light on the existence of the spring, gave rise to a plethora of questions about the extent, depth, and nature of the seepage path. The visual correlation between reservoir level and seepage hinted at potential vulnerabilities in the existing grout curtain or undiscovered seepage pathways beyond its established reach. The uncertainty surrounding the exact trajectory fueled a sense of urgency to comprehensively understand the intricate dynamics at play. To address these multifaceted concerns, a strategic and phased supplemental grouting program emerged as the recommended course of action. The program was not just a reactive measure but a proactive strategy aimed at reducing seepage through fractured rock, thereby mitigating potential damage to the right abutment and fortifying the Rockville Dam's overall structural integrity. The incident, far from being a mere challenge, evolved into a focal point for engineering scrutiny. This scrutiny, in turn, led to a meticulous and multidisciplinary examination that involved geological logging, piezometer installations, and the intricacies of laying out an extensive grout curtain. The proposed grouting program, delineated into two distinct phases, each with specific drilling approaches, sought to reinforce the dam's foundation against the identified seepage paths. In essence, the spring incident during the initial reservoir filling unfolded as a saga of intricate interplays between geology, water flow dynamics, and the structural nuances of the dam. The technical response, characterized by a harmonious integration of geological insights and engineering precision, aimed not only to address the immediate challenges but also to establish a robust framework for the long-term resilience of the dam system. As engineers delved into the complexities of the incident, each layer of analysis revealed new dimensions and intricacies. The geological logs, transformed into detailed narratives, became a testament to the evolving understanding of the underlying rock formations and their response to the dynamic hydrological conditions. Piezometers, strategically positioned, became silent sentinels. Capturing the nuanced fluctuations in water pressures and providing real-time insights into the right abutment's response to the ongoing grouting efforts. The proposed grouting program, far from being a routine task, evolved into a meticulously choreographed symphony of technology and expertise. Each drill hole became a strategic point of intervention, a conduit through which engineers aimed to influence the subterranean dynamics. The choice of grouting materials, the calibration of grout pressures, and the selection of drilling methods all became integral components in this symphony of precision. In the field of dam construction, where the forces of nature meet the ingenuity of human engineering, flexibility is not just a virtue but a necessity. The engineer, akin to a maestro guiding an orchestra, retained the authority to adjust the program based on the evolving conditions encountered in the field. This adaptability became a crucial element in the ongoing narrative of the supplemental grouting program. It became a dynamic plan influenced by the anticipated drilling production. Mobilizing two drill rigs for phase one and a potential third rig if phase two was implemented, the plan anticipated drilling production per drill at 7M slash day, emphasizing efficiency and precision. 
Instrumentation, a crucial aspect of the monitoring strategy, became a linchpin in the ongoing saga. In the ever-evolving landscape of dam construction, the drilling approach became a crucial determinant of success. The reservoir's expected maintenance below L1009 meant that most of the proposed drilling would be below the reservoir level. The upstage grouting method, adopted for efficiency, involved drilling in 7-meter long stages, with exceptions made when holes were unstable or as determined by the engineer. The drilling fluid circulation strategy became a critical aspect of the operation. If circulation was lost above the level of the reservoir, supplemental circulation water was to be added to the drill hole from the ground surface. This not only ensured the cooling of the drill bit but also facilitated the flushing of cuttings down the hole or to the surface. The choice of drilling equipment became a strategic decision. Rotary core drilling or small air rotary percussion drills were recommended, while the use of air percussion drilling using the Atlas Copco track drill was expressly prohibited due to its potential for damaging weaker rocks. Grouting materials, a cornerstone of the grouting program, were carefully chosen to match the specific conditions encountered below the reservoir level. Predominantly performed below L1009, grouting aimed to avoid washout risks. The contractor was directed to mix ordinary Portland cement grout and separately add a sodium silicate additive to optimize setting time and reduce potential for grout washout. The grouting process itself became a meticulous operation, conducted in 7-meter long stages in an upstage method. The packer set downhole ensured that the grout was injected at the desired pressure, essential for effective penetration into the fractured rock. The sodium silicate additive was introduced just at the surface before the grout sodium silicate mixture was injected downhole through the second grout hose. Downstage grouting, necessitated by hole collapse, was not just a reactive measure but a carefully orchestrated strategy. If holes collapsed, they were to be cleaned out before the grout hardened to eliminate the need for redrilling. Polyurethane grouting, an alternative, was suggested for downhole injection with appropriate packers. Grout pressures, calibrated to the conditions encountered in the field, became the guiding force for the grouting operation. Assuming the grout plant and pressure gauge were set at Afmacam Road Mixing Station L1023, refusal pressures were recommended based on depth. These refusal pressures, though suggested, retained the flexibility for adjustment by the engineer based on field conditions. Instrumentation for monitoring grouting effectiveness became an integral component of the grouting program. Seepage measurements, conducted by a V-notch were near diversion tunnel station 0 plus 240, aimed to capture seepage from the tunnel. The assessment of total flow, a crucial parameter, involved temporary plugging of existing debris channel drain holes to channelize the flow for comprehensive measurement. Geologic logging, a key aspect of the grouting program, extended its reach to the diversion tunnel. As engineers drilled grout holes, meticulous logs were prepared to include descriptions of lithology, hole stability or collapse, water losses and gains, locations of grouted joints in the core, and other pertinent data necessary to unravel the geological intricacies of the right abutment. The proposed schedule for supplemental grouting activities, outlined with a set of assumptions, became a dynamic plan influenced by the anticipated drilling production. Mobilizing two drill rigs for phase one and a potential third rig if phase two was implemented, the plan anticipated drilling production per drill at 7M slash day, emphasizing efficiency and